It's Super Wild Card Week in the NFL, and we're going to break down all six games, making our picks for against the spread and straight out winners, as well as our Super Bowl participants and winner picks. And it's all coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Michael Wiley, and we're the Fantasy Football Consultants. Michael, as a part of Subscriber Appreciation Week, we once again thank all of you guys who are subscribers. We are doing a bonus show, making our predictions. Michael, this is my favorite show of the year where we get to make our predictions. Just remind everybody that last year at this time, both you, Michael, and I, Super Bowl predictions, were the LA Rams, and they uh, they they made it. Let's see. I've got I've, I have someone special as, uh, as, a, as a pick this week, but we're going to hold that out to the end of the show for our Super Bowl picks. But just in case, Michael, that we're way off this year, <laughs> we got some help, right? That's right. We brought in our uh, our expert, Aaron Dean, who's joined us a few times. The fans probably know him by now. Aaron, so good to have you. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks, fellas. It's glad to be here. All right, folks. So uh, just as a quick reminder, uh, Michael and I did do a FanDuel and a DraftKings show this week for Wild Card Week, and you can look into the description for the links to that. Let's get into the six games here for uh, Wild Card Week. We're going to go in order of timing, and the first game is the San Francisco 49ers at home, a 10-point favorite over the Seattle Seahawks. Michael. I'm going to let you start. I got something I have to do. Go ahead. Tell us about this game. So, I mean, these these teams, I know Aaron or Eric doesn't probably want to talk about it all. They've already been meeting <laughs> a couple times this year. Uh, there's been years in the past when Seattle has had, had the Niners number, but that hasn't been the case this year. The Niners have won 10 games in a row. Seattle has been going the, the other direction, unfortunately. The Niners are eight and one at home. Seattle is four and four on the road. This game is in San Francisco. You know, it really looks like everything is teed up really <clears> nice <throat> for the Niners to just demolish Seattle. I think that's what's expected. But Aaron, it's really hard to beat a team three times in a year. Any chance for Seattle here? Uh, maybe if you know Kyle Shanahan doesn't show up. But uh, no. <laughs> I, 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 I only kid because I care, Eric. Um, no, it, 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 it's the end of, you know, I, I talked about this earlier when we when I was on the show, I don't know, mid-year. And uh, San Francisco, I really wanted to put as my number one team in the power rankings. And this is why. Um, their defense is legit. Their front four gets after quarterbacks. Geno, as good as Geno was the first eight games of the season, Geno is Geno. And Gino has regressed to be Gino Smith again. Uh, it's going to be rainy. Um, it's been torrential downpours here on the West Coast. And the field is obviously tarped, but that day we're going to have significant rain again. Uh, it's going to be a slow, muddy track. Uh, I think it's going to be a ground and pound. And, man, we've seen it before in the playoffs. Shanahan is not afraid to run the ball. So uh, I, I think – He's got a good, healthy stable of running backs. Elijah Mitchell's healthy now. So he'll be able to split time with uh, with Christian McCaffrey. And then the backup that really kind of showed a lot of promise and runs really hard too is Jordan Mason for the 49ers as well. So with those three, um, I, I can't see the 49ers uh, getting stalled out this week. So, Eric, defend your team. Well, I'm not <laughs> beautiful sure if there. Aaron is picking the Niners both straight up and against the spread wait, wait, wait. well I, i'm gonna say this eric it is so hard to beat a division a team three times in a row um and a divisional foe that knows each other so well and pete carroll obviously uh is a very very good coach but this is a quarterback league um both are rookie quarterbacks going into the nf are going into their first playoff game essentially but Purdy does everything Kyle Shanahan asks. I think this is kind of a low-scoring game. It's an under for me, under the 43. But I think San Francisco wins this game 23 to 10-ish. Um, and, it, and it won't feel that close. Okay. I don't really care about the spread. I don't need the, the spreads. 
my only thing that I want to know is who is going to win it. And it's a really a tough call, but I think the Seahawks will win against the Eagles. <laughs> I think they'll beat the Eagles next week. Uh, I think the upset is possible. Oh, wait a minute. Am I looking past the Niners? Oh, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> let me talk about the Niners. I'll save my Eagles pick for uh, uh, for the next next week. No, that's I, awesome. I, yeah, thank you. Well, I I kid, I kid. Um, I've been saying, and at the very beginning, we we did a show in, in week. Uh, I think at the first end of the first quarter of the season, and I told you guys, look, the Seahawks team is not a bad team. Uh, and I predicted that they were going to be the best team not to make the playoffs. Well, thank you, Lions, for uh, not making me perfectly correct. But guess what? When it comes to playoff teams, they are a bad team. Okay, They're one of the worst teams uh, in uh, the, the, the playoffs. Uh, Tampa Bay, we'll get to them later, uh, can potentially compete. I think the Seahawks got a terrible uh, um matchup here right I, I think they would have had a chance against a lot of other teams whether it be the nfc or the afc but they simply don't against san francisco partially not just because san francisco is good but because of the matchup one thing the seahawks really like to do is run the ball and the second best rush defense is the san francisco 49ers even though almost everyone i can think of is picking the seahawks within the spread i am not so I am actually going with the San Francisco 49ers uh, minus 10 here. And uh, I hope I'm wrong. Michael? Yeah, no. So I, I agree. I, I really think that – so the, the, the Raiders tried to show – our Raiders, Aaron, tried to show everybody <laughs> how to, to to pick on the the Niners. But, you know, that was really an, an anomaly. I All think. right. we well, This is – what. Three agreements? This is this has got to change. This has got to change. And I have a feeling it's going to change with our next game on Saturday. L.A. Chargers are one-point favorites at Jacksonville. All things point in favor of the Jags here, not just the fact that they trounced them um, earlier this year uh, and their, de their defense is starting to figure things out again. They started pretty strong early in the season, which surprised a lot of people, and they're starting to come back. They just had a playoff game this last week, which was good for them. They have a coach that's won the Super Bowl before against a, versus a coach that you know a lot of us have head-scratched over and over and over again. Their quarterback is finally starting to get there. Um, to me, San Diego has to, to really do a few things that would shock Yes, their defense should be good and they're healthy, but have they been playing? Are they are they are they ripe? I don't know that their defense is ripe. They haven't been playing together with the strength. Bosa's back, um, and that's huge. Uh, Allen is healthy, but Williams is it? I mean, back spasms, back problems are they, they can they can flare up in any moment. And Justin Herbert, as talented as he can be. I am not sure that they've built this offense properly around him. I love Eckler. He was on my fantasy team, as you know, Eric, led me to maybe uh, record points during the season, although you beat me in the playoffs. Uh, I, I, I would be surprised, other than perhaps the Jags not scoring enough points with uh, the San Diego charge, or sorry, the LA Chargers winning this uh, game. Aaron? Yeah, Michael, I think you hit the nail on the head with me is it comes down to both quarterbacks are new in the playoffs, right? And so we've seen in the playoffs historically um, a rookie quarterback in the playoffs making his first career start in the playoffs traditionally does not do well against another quarterback um, who's been there before because the speed of the game and it. But this one, it's even, um, you know, both Trevor Lawrence, although he's in his second year, um, you know, you look at uh you know, Herbert, he's in his third year now. But for me, and, and what you had said before, it comes down to coaching. And this is uh, this is no knock, I guess, against Brandon Staley. Is they're both gamblers, right? Um, Doug Peterson, they, all, they call him the riverboat gambler. Um, but he takes his risks calculated. And that feels to me like there is more rationale behind some of his risks versus Brandon Staley. I mean, you have no idea what the guy's thinking. Like, why are we going for it right now on fourth down? Uh, this is not one of those moments to be going for it on fourth down. You should be punting the ball or, uh, you know, and, and giving it back um, and, and taking your chances that way. 
for me, I, I think it's a big coaching mismatch. And, and you're looking at a Jacksonville Jaguars team that is red hot. And they are playing with a lot of confidence. They're going to run the ball. You said Bosa is back. Bosa is a pass rusher. Bosa does not fit, defend the run that well. For an elite player that he is, uh, you can run at Bosa. I think Jacksonville will ground and pound, play action. They'll score just enough points. They're going to cover this line, and they're going to win the game. Uh, Aaron, I'm going to disagree with you. You said that the Jacksonville uh, Jaguars are coming in red hot. You're right in the sense that they've won. But who have they beaten? They beat Tennessee Titans, who you guys were like bragging about uh, <laughs> seven, eight weeks ago. Coach Vrabel, coach of the year, blah, 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 blah. I, I, the, the Titans were frauds. Um, and, it, and when they got behind, it, it, especially once they lost Tannehill. So they beat the, mm-hmm. the Tennessee twice. Once with Joshua Dobb, they beat a Zach Wilson-led Jets team, and they beat uh, the awful, awful uh, Texans, Um, and they beat Dallas in OT. So um, that was their their last five wins. I watched that Tennessee game. They were very lucky to beat that Tennessee uh, team. It was only that interception late. I just think the Chargers are the better team here. I think that the, now that they're they're healthy, I respect what you say. Staley is to some questionable things out there at the coach, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the the, the Chargers here. And I have to tell you, if I was uh, Kansas City, I would be rooting hard for uh, Jacksonville. I think the Chargers have a chance with uh, Joey Bosa back and healthy along with, of course, Khalil Mack, they they could upset Kansas City. So I, I'm going with the Chargers here in the first round. Like, you're right. They have not played too many good teams, Dallas being the one lone uh, solid team that we could probably agree on that, uh, that they did beat. There's just something about the way they're playing with the swag that they have, and confidence means a lot. Does does the chart do the Chargers have a more talented roster? One hundred percent. They are loaded, but why can't they win consistently? It's their coach, and if I'm a if I'm a LA Charger fan, I am praying they lose because Sean Payton with this squad and this quarterback. I mean, look out AFC West because it's over. All right. Well, let's move on to our third game going into Sunday. It is Buffalo. 10 and a half point favorites uh, against Miami. Aaron, we'll let you kick this one off. Yeah, so it's interesting, Eric. Um, That line so far has come down actually to nine. You can get it in some books at nine. Um, Does that mean that Tua is going to play? I think that's the big question here. And uh, if if you believe that Tua is going to play, then this line I think definitely gets closer to probably eight or even seven just because – while, yes, he's coming off a of concussion protocol and things of that nature, he has run this offense very efficiently for Mike McDaniels. Uh, but Tyreek Hill got banged up uh, in the game last this last week. How, how healthy is he going to be 100%? I mean, a 90%, 85% Tyreek Hill is probably better than most 100% wide receivers out there. Uh, Tua definitely gives him a fighting chance, but... I think Buffalo now is on a mission. And last week they played a divisional foe in the New England Patriots, but it's coming off the the tragic or near tragic uh, loss of a, of a player where um, obviously it was revived um, Hamlin. And uh, they they still kind of had that deer in the headlight look last year or this last weekend, but they kind of got things rolling. I think Buffalo wins this thing big. I just disagreed with you, Aaron. Now I'm back on back on your your your, your <laughs> side. Right. Um, so, uh, in addition to the injuries, Raheem Mostert, the Dolphins running back, fractured thumb. He isn't going to to play. Um, this line seems to think Tua is not going to play, and I do not think he will play, um, given his concussion. And I also am worried about Teddy Bridgewater, who I think is a capable re- replacement with a with a a bad I think it's thumb uh, that he that he hurt in the, in the game. Skylar Thompson, oh my d- goodness, I, this is going to be a blowout uh, easily, easily. I had to think a lot about the Seattle 
um, deep spread. I don't have to think. I'm very confident that Buffalo with Skylar Thompson uh, is gonna, going to cover. If it turns out that Tua plays and he actually is okay, then I, I, I might change my opinion. But I'm going to bet. If I have to bet now, I'm betting that Tua doesn't play, and I'm picking Buffalo against the spread. Michael? Yeah, I don't think it really matters. For, for one, I, I, I hope <laughs> Tua doesn't play. I don't think he should play. I don't think it's good for his health. No one should get three concussions in a season. Um, and uh, even if he were to play with Tyreek Hill, basically on a bad wing, uh, and, and, and their passing game has – you know, they've been using the running game a little bit. Their defense, uh, since picking up Bradley Chubb, has showed some flashes of strength. Um, but, you know, Buffalo's just too good. Uh, you know, they're going to ride this Hamlin factor, I think, to, to you know, get them continually energized. Yes, Josh Allen has been a little bit suspect around uh, in the red zone. Um, and, uh, you know, we've seen a couple things that show some holes in Buffalo that I, I'm not sure we knew about earlier on. Uh, but this is going to be a blowout. It's a nice way for Buffalo to start their playoffs. You know, and, and yeah, Buffalo had to play New England tough, but they basically had a week off, obviously an emotional week. Um, they kind of, you know, had a, a pretty safe second half. They're going to have a nice game here against the Dolphins. They're going to be fresh uh, going against uh, what I think is going to be Cincinnati. That's a preview to my next game or to the game later on. <laughs> Minnesota three point favorites against the New York Giants. Go ahead, Michael. You take it. Wow. So this is this is I think uh, going to be a a great matchup. Um, this might be the most fun game to watch this week, in my opinion. That that Jag San Diego game will also be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, they have already played this year. Uh, Minnesota squeaked out one of their many squeak out wins. Um, if they're the first twelve win team to have a negative differential ever. Uh, probably not surprising to hear that, but um, you know they they've gotten beat bad when they've gotten beat. Uh, they looked like they were going to get beat bad a couple times when they've come come back. I really like Kevin O'Connell. I think he's a great coach, um, and uh, you know you got to love the weapons that Minnesota has now that they've got Hawkinson. Uh, is Cook hurt? I, I know he's you know he's listed to come back. Um, the, the the Giants probably don't quite have the same talent, but I really like Brian Dable as well. Uh, I think Thibodeau on the defensive side can, can make, uh, an impact. Um, I think New York giants should win this game. They had a nice week off, um, you know, but so, but so did Minnesota. Uh, I think the giants get a, a revenge game, uh, here. Not that I think they're going to go very far. I think it's just because Minnesota is not what, uh, their record says. Uh, Eric, I'll throw it back to you before Aaron finishes up. All right, sure. I was going to hope Aaron at some point will disagree with Michael. I want to see you two go <laughs> at it, but I will take the first shot. I, this is so trendy. Everybody wants to pick the New York Giants. Everyone says that the Minnesota Vikings are completely overrated. Michael mentioned it. They have a negative differential. They have actually given up more points uh, than they have scored this year. You know who else has given up more points than they've scored this week, this year? The New York Giants. Look, for for the spread, three points, they're saying that these teams are equal on a neutral field. I do not buy it. I do not think the New York Giants are a very good football team. Um, look, would I rather the Seahawks have played Minnesota? Sure, I think Minnesota's a lot worse than San Francisco. They are not worse than the New York uh, Giants. You guys, we've talked a lot about playoff uh, experience and, and quarterbacks. Uh, Daniel Jones, this is their his first ever uh, playoff game. Kirk Cousins, you know, with varied success, I get it, but he has had that experience and he's playing at home. Give me Minnesota and give me them even against the spread. I'll give away the three points. Aaron, who, whose uh, side are you going to take? <laughs> <laughs> Michael's side or the right side? Hey, so Michael makes a very rational uh, point. But, Eric, I'm with you on this. I am going to put money on Minnesota to win uh, this game by more than three on the spread. I, I'm actually going to eat those points. And I'm going to go with Kirk Cousins. And uh, and the biggest factor is that Daniel Jones is making his first playoff start. And, and I think the coaches are, are relatively even here. It just seems to me like Minnesota um, – they, we might get the lucky cover on this one and I'll, and I'll take the lucky cover. And, and I think they run into problems next week. 
Let's go to Cincinnati at home, six and a half point favorites over Baltimore. Aaron, let's uh, kick it to you to uh, kick off for this one. Yeah, so ever since uh, Baltimore got Roquan Smith from the Chicago Bears, they've used both of their linebackers there at rushing the passer a little bit more. They're getting to the quarterback more. The defense is going to be really, really solid. This is a divisional foe. Nobody really blows anybody out in these particular games. Um, And obviously, they just played this last week. Uh, With that being said, I still think Cincinnati held a lot back. Um, I think this team is red hot. And if you're going to bet on anybody, you're going to bet on Joe Burrow. Um, We will know more on Thursday whether or not Baltimore will have uh, Lamar Jackson back. If he is not practicing on Thursday, I guarantee it that Jim – or not Jim, but John Harbaugh will not let Lamar Jackson play given only going through a Friday walkthrough. That, that's not going to happen. So um, expect Huntley uh, to be a quarterback for, for Baltimore, and, and I think Cincinnati rolls big. Michael? Yeah, so – and I don't even think it matters if Lamar Jackson comes back. Um, you know, he wasn't very sharp this year in any event. He'll be less sharp coming off, um, uh, you know uh, – not playing and uh even though he can sometimes start a, a, the season nicely it's because he he can do so much with his legs I, you know obviously if he comes in he can do stuff with his legs Huntley is even actually decent with his legs John Harbaugh is going to try and make this an ugly game and I don't think he's going to be able to do that uh, Cincinnati is too good right now I think they're so scary good I wouldn't want to face them at all uh Buffalo is probably going to try and rest as much as they can against the Dolphins so that they can be strong in Cincinnati. I don't even think this game, there's a question, you know, whether or not it it ends up being a six point game or, or, or or more because of the spread there, I think will just depend on whether or not there's some, you know, late antics that gives Buffalo a chance to go from 13 down to six or something like that. Uh, Otherwise no question. Cincinnati wins this game. I really like, uh, I really like uh, Zach Taylor. Burrow is looking solid. Uh, I love John Harbaugh, but he just doesn't have enough to to make this happen. All right. Once again, Michael and Aaron Aaron agree. Did you guys get together? And once again, (laughs) I am going to disagree with you guys. Uh, Not only am I going to pick Baltimore to win by the spread, assuming that Lamar Jackson does play in this game, I am going to call one of the few people who are doing this, I'm going to call Baltimore for the upset this week to win and spoil what I think a lot of people want to see is a Buffalo-Cincinnati rematch uh, next week and finishing that game. Um, Here's why. Uh, The Baltimore defense. Look, I have a lot of respect for Cincinnati. They're, They're very good. But watch out for their offensive line. They just lost Alex Kappa, who I think is so important on that offensive line. So now they have two offensive linemen out and Baltimore did a good job on Joe Burrow in the two games that they've played, held them to 217 and 215 uh, yards. And so I think this game is going to be close. And if it's close advantage Baltimore because of Justin Tucker. So I am going to uh, pick Baltimore but that is assuming Lamar Jackson plays. Otherwise I would not advise that. Any final things before we go on? I I just think Aaron, Eric wanted to do that so he could show that he had a differential. (laughs) And when he doesn't play, because he's not going to play, then he can say, well, you know, it was only if Lamar Jackson. (laughs) If I had the bet now, I think Lamar Jackson is expected to play. And I would take, put the money on Baltimore on the against the spread. And if you want to make some money, put them on the money line. Um, Can we have a side bet, by the way, after this? uh... Sure, sure. Uh, (laughs) My house is not up for consideration. (laughs) All right. So the last game may actually be the most intriguing. It is the Dallas Cowboys, who are three-point favorites at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So for me, it's this. It comes down to both the quarterback situation. Um, Tom Brady, the GOAT, and Dak Prescott, who is leading the league in interceptions and missed a big chunk of the year. Um, And I'll be honest, um, 
I'm not really a big Mike McCarthy fan either. Um, when it comes to coaching, he, he, he basically rode the coattails of a hall of fame quarterback and Aaron Rodgers, uh, who made his life a lot easier. So I think this comes down to a couple of different things. Godwin is 100% healthy. Mike Evans is 100% healthy. Their wide receiving core is, is healthy for, for Tampa Bay. Dak Prescott not playing well, making very, very, very poor decisions in games, throwing a lot of interceptions. I think Tampa Bay, if they don't win this game, it's under three points. I mean, it's going to be a one-point score uh, or one-point win. My gut is telling me that somebody is on the phone in Dallas saying, you've got to run the ball. You know, you've got these two really good running backs. You've got one of the best offensive lines in the league. You've got a good defense that hasn't been playing well of late. You've got to be able to hold this, you know, the, this atrocious running game of the Bucks down and 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 make Tom Brady look as bad as he did several games. This I watched him over and over again. Unfortunately, he was my fantasy quarterback. Uh, and he missed throws. Like crazy, he has never been this afraid. I don't know if it's something mental that's going on. Dallas should win this game. They're the better team. Uh, I think it's gonna, they're going to figure it out. Um, but uh, the the omens are saying that that the Bucks should win this game. So I'm I'm I kind of with there, and it's going to be a one point game. But I think it's a one point game, and Dallas wins it. Eric. I just don't think Tampa Bay is a very good team as evidenced by the uh, eight and nine record before last week, which I cannot explain to you what Dallas was doing last week. Um, and I'm just going to chalk it off to just a, a, a terrible game because they played their all their starters and they just played uh, terrible. I truly think Dallas is the better team. They're four uh, games better than, uh, than, than Tampa Bay. I know that people make a lot of things that this is on grass and that it's on the road and Tampa Bay can't play. Uh, sorry, Dallas can't play on on grass. I think that's a little overblown. Uh, the weather is not going to be a consideration. Uh, so I am going to disagree with both of you because that's what I do. Uh, I am going to pick Dallas against the spread. So that's the way it differs from Michael. Um, so um, I'll give the, the the three points. All right, guys. Let's make, we've been, drum roll, let's make our <laughs> Super Bowl picks, okay? So let's start by revealing our Super Bowl loser, who we think will make the Super Bowl but lose. And I am going to say my Super Bowl loser is the Philadelphia Eagles. I think that's a pretty safe pick, Eric. They They yeah. obviously will enjoy this buy. They they could get a pretty easy matchup uh potentially the next week. Um and so, you know, I think uh, they are the safest one to make it to the NFC championship. Um but I, I think I'm gonna go with the Niners. Uh I think uh I'm with you. It's the NFC that's gonna lose the Super Bowl this year. AFC is just so strong and gonna be battle tested. I am gonna put two hundred bucks on the Niners to win the NFC but not to win the Super Bowl. And I'm going to put $200 on plus 800 Cincinnati Bengals. And we're going to have a rematch of a throwback Super Bowl, the Niners versus Cincinnati, and the Bengals are going to come out on top. Wow. Okay. So you disagree twice with me. So, I do. <laughs> so I am. <laughs> so great. So you're going with the Niners, not the Eagles, and you're going Cincinnati, the team that I had getting eliminated in the first in round. The first All round. right. I love it. Um, my pick, and if, if you can just ignore everything that I've said the entire show. The only thing that I seem to always get right is my Super Bowl winner. It is the Buffalo Bills. It's going to be a storybook ending after everything they had to, to go through. But more than that, I think a lot of times you got to face adversity, get that playoff experience. And I think that team, not just Josh Allen, that team has had – a lot of playoff experience and I think that they do it this year and uh, they beat uh, Kansas city and they beat uh, Philadelphia for the championship. Michael. Yeah. So I've been hot on this Buffalo team is, as well all, all season long. I've been disappointed by a couple of their, you know, mistakes uh, when they lost the hand. I think Hamlin makes it to where this would be a nice storybook season for them to go. I really want it for Josh Allen. 
Uh, but I think Cincinnati's going to do the Chiefs a favor, and they're going to beat Buffalo in neutral ground in two weeks. But the Chiefs are going to figure out how to beat Cincinnati, and then the Chiefs are going to go on to the Super Bowl and repeat what they did a couple years ago against the Niners. What I really love about these playoffs is that it is wide open. So it doesn't shock me that we have – Three different winners, and I believe five different teams in the Super Bowl. Aaron, it was so awesome to have uh, have you on the show. Any final comments? No, it's always a pleasure to be here. And uh, I, I just look forward to eating some crow, uh, hopefully, uh, maybe from you, Eric, next uh, next time I'm on next year. So hopefully well, Cincinnati pulls it out for me. <laughs> so we'll, 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 we'll talk to your agent, but we will like to have you back before the Super Bowl. So we will okay. know uh you know when when it's when it's Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, it. And, <laughs> and the LA Chargers yeah. that yeah. we all were wrong. That's right. <laughs> so the quick reminder on the screen now is our FanDuel and DraftKings show for week uh for wildcard week. Until we see you next time, take care everybody. Bye-bye. See ya.